So good afternoon, everyone. We are the Group 3, and we are going to present some of the issues in the cruise line industry, the environmental issues and pollutants. Next slide. So there are different pollutants and ways derived from diverse activities and processes aboard cruise ships. In some cases, they're classified as a hazardous waste according to current national and international pollution prevention regulations, depending on the factors of ignability, corrosive, potential, reactivity, and toxicity. In a single day, the amount of solid waste garbages generated can massive because of the presence of thousands of numbers of passengers and crew members on board. An average cruise ship generates around 3.5 kilograms of solid waste per passenger and crew members every day. But keep in mind that it is difficult to determine the amount of solid waste generated by the cruise industry worldwide, with important discrepancies in the calculation of even an approximate quantity. So some of the garbage and solid waste are cardboards, paper plastics, glass, and diverse metallic waste. Next slide. So there are potential impact from pollution solid waste on the open ocean and coastal environment can be significant with a diversity of effects and consequences. The effects and consequences of the potential impact of pollution by solid waste in the open ocean and coastal environment are a static degradation of surface waters in coastal areas, entanglement of seabirds, fish, seabirds, fish, turtles, and cetaceans, which may result to injuries of death by ingestion of acceptation, physical injuries to human, ecological damage because of plastic and other synthetic substances, ecological damage at a planktonic level, and Nutri nutrient pollution. Next slide. So the garbage floating in the large rafts of sunken, which would remain intact for years, can result to the following. Number one, contamination of habitat with non-indigenous invasive species and extinction of native species many miles away from original ecosystem. Number two, Harmful to harm to animals feeding upon the, the, this debris. Harm to seabirds, turtles, and certain mammals feeding upon the, the debris with the risk of death from starvation or intestinal blockage. And ecological damage from accumulation of solid waste. Next slide. So the second um, issue in the cruise ship is the incinerator ash. It is ash generated in the, in the incineration waste is not normally hazardous. If waste has been properly segregated and handled according to accepted hazardous waste regulations. Cruise ships nowadays use an onboard incinerator in order to burn waste like food, sewage, paper, wood, plastics into flammable gas, bio oil, and charcoals. WT or waste to energy is the process of burning waste materials to produce heat that can be used to evaporate water and generate steam. This is also divided into categories, namely IBA or the incinerated bottom ash and APC or the air pollution control. The incineration also generates forms of waste itself, such as emissions of unburned gases and metals and hazardous products of combustion, such as the dioxins, furans, and heavy metals that are released into the air. Next slide. And the next presenter is Monica Baldwin. So let's proceed to the hazardous waste. Hazardous waste is a solid or is a subset of solid waste which contains hazardous constituents that can be liquid, solid, semi-solid, or contain gas. So if the waste is identified as a hazardous, as a hazardous waste, any person who is assigned to take care of it must comply with applicable state and federal regulations. So, hazard, so cruise ships can, pre, can produce around 15 gallons of hazardous waste every day, such as medical waste, dry cleaning sludge, batteries, chemicals, and more. So these materials contain a wide diversity of harmful substances and compounds that can, po that can pose serious health and environmental hazards, such as hydrocarbons, 
chlorinated hydrocarbons and heavy metals, which require a safe management and disposal. Next slide, please. So next is the photo processing and x-ray development fluid waste. The used photographic and x-ray development fluids may be assumed to be a hazardous waste, which includes spent fixer, expired film, silver flake, etc. So photographic fixer removes the unexposed silver compounds from the film during the developing process with a concentration of around 2,000 to 3,000 parts per million of residual silver particles. And it is considered as hazardous if its level exceeds five parts per million. So additional information, the X-ray film processing is associated with pollution from photochemicals and from, the and from the water used to rinse the film. So this pollution has several potential sources ranging from the transportation of photochemicals to the release of rinsing water that contains silver. And did you know that the handling of this photochemical is environmentally hazardous and in a year, several tons of photochemicals are reported to be lost. Next slide, please. So the next one is the print shop waste. So printer ink is toxic to human beings, but you will need to direct, but you will need to directly ingest it to see the effects. So this ink contains of chemicals that can be harmful to the environment, such as petroleum oil and non-biodegradable plastic casing. So the negative impact of simply throwing an old ink or toner cartridge into the garbages are plentiful. So because of the increased use of laser and photocopying equipments in cruises, it results in the gener generation of waste toner materials and printing or copying cartridge cartridges which contains hazardous chemical components. So this waste may contain hazardous fluid such as waste, inks, printing solvent that contains hydrocarbons, chlorinated hydrocarbons, heavy metals, and diverse chemical combination that is harmful to aquatic ecosystem and human life. So to conclude, Cruise ship pollution is the biggest issue that must put to an end. And the good thing is that there exists a range of new technologies aimed at reducing the waste produced by cruise liners, such as onboard incineration plants, recycling programs, as well as cheaper, less polluting fuel options, such as liquefied natural gas or what we call the LNG. So the most important thing to do is to ask, if you want to know what a cruise, if you want to know what a cruise ship our cruise line is doing for the environment before you book or don't know where you can recycle waste on board, then ask someone. The more Because the more people ask, the more cruise lines will take these things seriously. The cruise industry is competitive. The companies are fighting to distinguish themselves and attract more customers. So the more pressure they get from customers to improve sustainability and environmental standards, the more these issues will rise up their agendas. And hopefully, the better the cruise, the, the better the cruise industry's environmental record will get in the future. That will be all. Thank you.